Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to go over sanding with you. Uh, there's three types of sanders we have. Uh, we have over here, we have the belt sander, good for all of your uh, large pieces of wood that need sanding. Uh, we have this one over here, the disc sander. Uh, this is uh, good for smaller pieces of wood. And then we have the oscillating spindle, spindle uh, sander, which will allow you to sand in holes or very, very curved objects. So all of them work almost exactly the same. All of them have these little red switches that you can see have the on and off position. And when you start them, the rotary will activate and you'll actually see the belt start to spin. Now it's really important with sanding tools, all of them spin, all of them are spindle devices. So you don't want to wear gloves when you wear them because your glove can get caught and, and uh, and the downward spinning force, so that'll cause your hand to get sucked in, and you don't want to do that. So normally when you're sanding something, you'll have some burned edge from something like the laser cutter, or you want something that looks a little smoother. So I'll demonstrate how to uh, basically sand. So I'll go with the wood scrap, get a small piece of wood. As we can see, there's a lot of jagged edges on this piece of wood. We're gonna try to smooth that out. And we see a lot of burned edges right here, so we're gonna try to take that away. So, when you're using a sander, you always want to make sure that you're gripping whatever you're using very tightly. If you don't, the sander is using a lot of force, so it'll force your hand downwards. So this is what's going to happen if you don't use a lot of force. So you'll see that your hand goes immediately towards the sander. You don't want to do that, so you want to make sure you're gripping both sides and using the plate whenever possible. And just feed into the sander. And just like that, we just smooth it out. Now, for trying to smooth out curves, you can use an angled approach. Start here. And we got most of the burn mark, and then, uh, and then you can just keep going where it's needed more. Uh, for a bunch of other angles, you would probably want to use the oscillating spindle, and for giant pieces of wood, again, you would want to use the belt sander. But that's most of sanding in a nutshell. Uh, if you're going to be sanding a lot of wood, you obviously don't want to breathe in that much sawdust. So if that's the case, and you know you're going to be doing a lot of sanding, you might want to wear one of these masks over here. There's a ton of them. If you're sanding acrylic, obviously wear a mask because it's plastic and you don't want to breathe it in because it's very cancerous, but so is sawdust, so really don't breathe it in if you can help it. We also have, uh, you can see that this belt is actually very coarse, it's not very high grade sanding. So uh, we also have a lot of sanding uh, sandpaper over here where we have uh, a bunch of higher grain, uh, if you're interested in that. But also, if you're willing to change out the belt, we also have a lot of uh, smoother, less coarse belts that we can change. You can see the difference, it's pretty significant. So if you needed to sand something a lot uh, smoother and you were worried that whatever you're using is too coarse, you can uh, feel free to change out the belt. And to do that, just make sure everything's turned off. You unscrew these two devices right here until the plastic plate comes off here and you can actually uh, see how the inner mechanisms work uh, and then what you want to do is you want to take off the actual metal plate and to do that there are these levers right over here uh, just always go by the rule lefty loosey righty tighty so to loosen the plate I would uh, I would basically spin left and then you also have these red push buttons right here that will reset your position without losing any of the tension that you just added to this lever. I'm not going to take it off right now because I don't want to. And then lastly, once you have the metal plate off, you can pull this last lever up here. And then you can actually see that the, uh, that the belt is actually able to be taken off. But that's only if you want to change it. You usually don't have to. So when all that's done, just set everything up the way you found it. And that's it.